Dear friends, welcome to the channel The Eastern Front. In the spring of 1945, Soviet troops stormed major German cities and faced the massive use by the Germans of anti tank grenade launchers, reusable Panzer Shreks, and disposable Panzer Faust. The effectiveness of this weapon still causes numerous disputes. In the works of domestic researchers, there are claims that the mass installation of protection against the false patron on armored vehicles was a completely senseless waste of time and effort, and didn't provide the necessary protection against the cumulative charge of the false patron. However, in this matter, not everything is as clear as it may seem at first glance. There is an opinion that the mass installation of anti-cumulative screens on Soviet armored vehicles before the Berlin operation could reduce losses from the false patrons. Indeed, on tests conducted by armored supply and repair department of the Second Guards Tank Army, as a result of the shelling of a captured German tank Panzerkorps IV, two variants of anti-cumulative screens were tested. In the first variant, mesh screens were tested, consisting of an iron bar with a diameter of 4 mm and with a step between the bars of 40 mm. The second method of shielding was an iron sheet 1.5 mm thick. Both versions of the screens were mounted by welding on brackets at a distance of 600 mm from the side of the tank. The shot from the false patron was fired from a distance of 12 meters. As a result, both the mesh and the iron sheet were turned at the point of impact and had a deflection towards the armor, and in both cases a through hole with a diameter of 30 mm was formed in the armor of the tank, while the hole in the armor of the tank without protective screens had a diameter of up to 70 mm. The tests have shown that the both methods of shielding reduced the size of the hole by more than two times, but the arm of the tank is not protected from penetration. In the report of the army, in the conclusions on the testing of two versions of the screens, it said, a comparison of the described shielding methods shows that the applied shielding reduced the size of the hole by more than two times, but doesn't protect the tank's armor from destruction. In order to prevent losses from false patrons, it's necessary to continue experiments on the shielding tanks with armored sheets, the thickness of which should be approximately 6-8 mm. The exact thickness of the screen should be determined experimentally, installed at the distance of 600 mm from the surface of the armor. The number of mounting brackets should ensure sufficient rigidity of the screens. The report on the fighting of the Second Guards Tank Army states the following. In connection with the use by the enemy on a massive scale of false patrons and open roars, means of protecting tank armor in the form of protective nets or other technical devices that weaken and protect armor from the action of Panzerfaust, shielding tanks operating as part of assault groups are needed. According to reports from the front, there were also such tank formations and units in which the combat tests of the screens were successful, as evidenced by a report on the combat operations of the corps. The experience of street fighting in the city of Berlin has shown that the German anti-tank mill weapons Faust Patron and Panzer Schreck caused significant damage to the advancing tanks. To reduce the vulnerability of tanks, the corps practiced installing screens. 1.5 cm sheet of iron or a wire mesh with a cross section of 4 mm were welded to the armor of the turret and tank body at a distance of 15-20 cm on the brackets. This upgrade was not reflected in the work of the engine and crew of the tank. Tanks operating in battle formations with screens installed have shown that the screens is a reliable means of protecting and in most cases protect tanks from destruction. Due to the end of hostilities, the experience has not been developed and requires further study. It was revealed that combined arms infantry in street battles abandoned tanks and left them without cover from enemy fausts. For the purpose of joint actions and reliable cover, tanks must be given motorized infantry trained by fire together with them. 
As can be seen in this case, the experience of using screens, moreover similar in design to those tested in the Second Guards tank army, turned out to be positive. Berlin pictures of tanks of the 20th Tank Brigade with mesh screens installed on them are also widely known. In the reports of the 65th Tank Brigade of the same corps, it's mentioned that the, during the storming of Berlin, three tanks in front of the assault group were shielded. The report states that the tank is well protected from being hit by a fast grenade, by a screen of 1.5 mm iron or a wire mesh with a cross section of 4 mm. The screens, similar in design to those in the Second Guard tank army, which didn't withstand the test, in this case they were used quite successfully and moreover in combat conditions. Also in one of the reports we could find that in the 11th tank corps and the 220th tank brigade, tank troops didn't experience any special difficulties when landing on tanks with installed protective screens and moving on them. In street combat, infantry should mainly move ahead of tanks and clear the nearest buildings from enemy grenade launchers, while the screens on the tanks cannot interfere with them in any way. When conducting street battles, the landing troops don't land on tanks, since they bear heavy losses from enemy machine gun fire, mortars and bricks of crumbling buildings. Also, in the report of the 220th Tank Brigade, it was noted that anti-aircraft machine guns mounted on the ISU-122 played a big role in the street battles, with the help of which the fight was waged against the Faust who were holed up on the third and fourth floors of buildings. There is also a document with the order of the commander of the 5th Shock Army dated 30 April 1945, sent to the commanders of the tank units of the army with the requirements to speed up the equipment of all tanks with screens as much as possible. The order states the following. The test carried out in a combat situation on tanks and self-propelled guns covered with a mesh iron screen show that the screen is an effective means of protecting the tank when Faust grenades hit it. The IS-122 covered with a mesh screen, despite being hit four times by a Faust grenade, remained unharmed. Similar protection was done with their own hands on Sherman tanks by American tankers for example, in the form of sandbags. According to the results of tests conducted by the Canadians in the summer of 1944, it was found that a 5mm thick steel screen installed at a distance of 300mm from the armor with a gap filled with the sandbags proved to be an effective protection against the cumulative jet of the Faust Patron. Faust patrons were mastered in the German army and began to arrive in large numbers for infantry armament. In addition, the German command armed the local population with the Faust patrons. This weapon played a significant role in the fight against our tanks, so the fight against them for our troops has become one of the most important issues. In the combat report of the headquarters of the 45th Guards Tank Brigade, dated by 28 April states, the enemy continues to use a large number of false patrons as the main means of fighting tanks, in most cases firing at our tanks with volleys of 10 to 25 false patrons simultaneously from several houses. At the same time, the enemy uses the fire of false patrons on our infantry, advancing in small groups and even alone. In the report on the fighting of the 7th Tank Brigade says, In those cases when infantry, hiding in the entrances of buildings and basements, doesn't ensure the safety of tanks from grenade launchers, tanks suffer heavy losses and cannot move forward. Before the bridge over the Landwehr Canal, south of the Anhalt railway station, the enemy set up barricades and rubble. Behind the barricades and in the buildings, directly behind the canal, grenade launchers were sitting, who shot tanks even when our infantry was ahead of the tanks at a distance of 20-30 meters. It should be noted that Faust Patron, of course, was not a miracle weapon, as the propaganda of the Third Reich tried to portray it, but at the same time, it was not an ineffective weapon. 
Comparing the effectiveness of false patrons with the artillery is generally meaningless, as are the losses from these types of weapons. For its time, the false patron was quite a modern individual anti-tank weapon. That's why the soldiers and the command of the Red Army tried to adapt to the new conditions of the city combat, taking into account the large number of grenade launchers. And as the well-known proverb says, all means are good in war. That's why, even despite the contradictory information about the testing of protective screens on the tank, they continued to be installed. Because if it gave at least a 10% chance of staying alive, it already made sense. I'm not even talking about the fact that it additionally raised the morale of tankers. Dear friends, that's all for today. It was Team and the Eastern Front channel. And as usual, I wish you peace and health. See you.